All right, guys. So remove the battery. I'm currently working on running this one. The four gauge, four out zero. I mean, you can see right here. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm running welding cable. <clears throat> but basically, I had to drill a hole to get it into the cab. Didn't want to, but this is what it is. I kind of oversized this slightly, but it's better than being scratching the shielding as, as you're bringing it to. Slightly oversized, you see. But that's good. I'll put um some silicone around this, so I'll go ahead and tape it up. Silicone the bottom, fill it nice and tight. And once it dries, I'll slide it down and then seal around the rest. Um, Basically, I ended up running it right behind the brake, right there. So I was trying to miss that screw, so I didn't hit it. And that's why it's a little oversized. It's right next to the shielding, but like I said, I'm a silicone and everything, so it should be sealed. Um, I'm gonna bring it back out. So, so far, it's work in progress. Just brought it all the way through, kind of where I'm going to guide it through. I'm going to take all these clips off, put it in between the firewall. If it doesn't fit in this channel, I'll probably tuck it in. It's like a little crease right here on our vehicles on the Sequoia first gen. So we'll probably run it through here and then try to tuck it in once we get further to the back. And I gave it enough slack to kind of tamper with it later. Um, I do sometimes have the third, third row seats in here. Sometimes I take them out, so I'm gonna have a secondary battery probably somewhere on this side for now. And then uh, I'm trying to get everything else under the front seats, center console and passenger seat, uh, which they do have AC vents, but they also have top AC vents, so I'm not too worried about them blocking the bottom too much. Well, I have a mess in here too, by the way. Yeah, well, I'll show you that once we get to it. I got a, had a wedding this weekend and went to the hotel and everything, so haven't had a chance to clean up. But anyways, um, yeah, that's the plan. Kind of wanted to show you this. You know, little little um, pieces and snippets of what's going on. Also, I have to grab ground, which I'm thinking of grounding somewhere. I think this runs right on the frame. If I'm not mistaken, so I'm gonna try to maybe get it in that bolt in there. Yeah, you can't really see, but I'll expose it and try to get you a better view. But there's like a bolt right here holding that in. I'm gonna try to take this out, pick it up, run it through the bottom, and then pop it up somewhere through here so it's not that visible on top. It'll only be right behind the right behind the battery, and then I'm thinking of using these channels and maybe cutting the slit this way to kind of um, hide some of my wires running behind to the amps and subwoofers. Um, when I do have the subwoofers in here, I'm going to try to just have the two seats so the battery will still, I'm going to try to push it back and leave it over there, but I don't want to leave the cables over there just in case I do end up putting the, the third row seat, I can pull the battery this way have enough cable to have it all the way over here and yeah i'll figure out how to hide it and kind of make it look nice but for now that's that's the plan um this is my agm north star that i have for about four years now but it's still good so i'll be using that one and i do have a lithium ion one that i might replace with later once this one gives up so we'll see all right so i wiped it with some um alcohol wipes all around kind of scratch right there i'm gonna have to shoot some paint over that so now i'm gonna put some e6000 silicone around it seal it i'm gonna seal the bottom see how i taped it up with some gorilla tape so i can get in there nice and into that edge so it's not scraping so that's what i'm gonna do now some E6000 
I'm not gonna be able to hold it and do it, so I'll come back and I do it. All right, so I put some in there. Try to get it, get it to focus. There it is. Be very generous. Uh, squeeze it in with your finger if you can. Um, I'm already smeared it, and then leave it like that for 20 to 30 minutes while it hardens, and then put the cable down and do the other top half and again be generous and tuck it in there so it creates a nice seal um i wanted to touch on the ground cables i still need to upgrade the ground i'm thinking of tapping the same point i'm gonna leave the whole factory wiring intact i'm gonna use some posts on on an aftermarket um terminal and I'm gonna keep these factory posts and then I'm just gonna add spots for the aftermarket power cables. But I'll be using this ground and I've been trying to chase where the factory ground goes, but I think it just shoots it's a ground straight for the for the alternator, so um I won't be replacing it. I'll just be tapping into this ground point right here. I think that taps straight into the frame, so I'll be using that bolt, uh, scraping off a little bit of the paint and, and grounding there. And hopefully that, that works. I'll see what the resistance is, but those are my two ground points. So that'll be my big three upgrade. Big four, because I already have a ground running from the alternator this way. Which is, oh yeah, I actually tucked it in there. So this is my ground coming from the alternator. Uh, but yeah, so. That's where we're at right now. I'm going to let it dry for a bit. And then I'll go ahead and um, drop it into the other one. Also, I almost forgot to mention, I did have to unscrew the fuse box. Which is one, two. That one's unscrewed, but I just kind of left it there. Three, and then four, four bolts. That one that goes there. And that gave me enough room to be able to get in here with my drill bit and, and do the drill out. Cause it's kind of complicated from the inside. If you have an extension, you could do it from the inside. I just didn't have it, so I had to do it through here. But yeah, quick video where I'm at. So that's the uh, anchor that was shown through here. I removed the bolt. I'm gonna uh, hit it with a Dremel right now before I ground it. And I removed the whole panel just to make the running of the cables easier. Uh, it's not too complicated, just a few pins. You can see the locking in place. You know, one might have popped out, and then it also anchors there and on that side. Um, there's also that connector. You need to disconnect. It goes to here. I don't know what it is to be honest with you, but it goes there, and pretty much the rest is just prying. You also have a clip <laughs> that goes in here. Where's that one at? Here it is. So this one goes in through the board and clips in here. Um, that one is that one down there. Sorry, my panel's a little bit messy. And then you have some pull terminals here. This one and this one you just pull and it pops out. It's a, it's a clip, this one's a bolt. That's a bolt. That's a bolt. And then the seat belt are the only things you need to unscrew to get that pan off. The rest are pins that you just pull out. And also removed. Um, you have to remove it from here. I removed this piece, which is three screws. Um, I threw that one in there so I don't have access to and the front one. So it's a similar side paneling. Mine are already broken, as you can see. But if you have one of these and you're removing it, um, they should look like that. Make sure you squeeze them when you're putting them back in, or else. You're gonna break them like I did. So just squeeze them with some pliers before you put them back in so they go in nice and smooth. And there you go, the screws popped out. Put them back in before I lose them. And yeah, I'm just gonna do the cable running. Uh, my battery's gonna die, so I probably won't be recording more today. But I finished pretty much this, found my ground points. And silicone that pretty good. You can see right there. It's nice and sealed. 
So yeah, that's the progress so far. Oh, and I have to kind of set up where everything's gonna go. Ugh, let me move this. So, kind of a little draft. Now that, that amplifier, and those two amplifiers. The seats are pushed forward right now, so once they're a little bit back, you won't see them that much, but I mean, I'm okay with them being visible a little. And this is the clip I was telling you about that was connected over here. So just be careful when you're pulling things out. So it was this clip, and I think there was another one somewhere back there. I forget. But uh, don't forget to plug everything back in. Oh yeah, it was for the cigarette lighter. Sorry. Sorry for my hand there. The cigarette lighter also had a connector that had no plug. So yeah, it's pretty simple removal. So the other connectors are pull. They're like this, you literally just pull them. See how it pops out, the top portion. And then you just pull it out. And then releases, push them back in. And then, that's it. So, not too difficult. All right, update. Nothing much going on here. But I did get the ground points. I need to work on this one. Uh, I couldn't get it to kind of bend in sh such short distance, so it has to be kind of like perfect. But I'm on a terminal, so that's gonna have to wait. But I'm gonna show you where I grounded it. Right there. So the splash shield goes up to here, kind of covers it a little, so it should be somewhat protected. And. The other one's going to the alternator, and then the other one that I need is to tap here and get it. These terminals kind of don't, I don't know if it was my negative terminal that's, that's giving out already, or what, but this ain't tightening, it still moves. I don't think it's getting a good ground, so uh, I'm going to try something different. But uh, I did get everything in, it's kind of a mess right now, just testing it out. But um took the whole center apart didn't end up being able to fit anything everything's kind of reduced right here i need a vacuum it's kind of dirty down here but um this is where your factory amp used to be and then this is the harness that i use to tap in so i'm gonna end up tapping these once i get the amplifiers running they're running now they'll power on but i mean i haven't run any any of the speaker wiring um but yeah, if you're wondering which ones you need to tap, this is the top clip portion. Um, you tap in on these sides. I forget which one's rear left, rear right, but it's only your rear channels. The front channels are up in the dash zone so behind the HVAC unit. Um, everything in the front, I'm going to be running individually since I'm going to go active. Um, I did tap the fuse in there just for now to test it out. Um, pull forward. But everything is powered on. I'm trying to show you. I haven't secured anything really, but uh, I just wanted to make sure everything clear, which it does. You can see the other ones that accidentally scratched this earlier with the chair, with the seat putting it back in. Oh well. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything's secured in place. Oops, get this out of here. Come on. Nothing's going anywhere. That's powered on. This is powered on. Oh, sorry for my hand. Sorry, accidentally activated. Sorry. Um, the other one's on. So is the epicenter. So you can see nothing's wired, no RCAs are ran. I just wanted to make sure I had all power and everything good to go, which everything seems to be powering on. Uh, let's see if I can get a quick glimpse at this. Yeah. Still gotta tidy everything up, so don't crit don't criticize me. Let me that's Everything down here. That's the power. I need to, this one's the only thing that's not secured yet. 
the matrix, but I will secure it after. That one's not going anywhere. It has all the power plugs connected. So. Oh, it's just test ready and everything. Are you sure the seat slid back without hitting anything? That's sitting well right now. There you go. You know, making sure not to interfere. And we're good. And right now, just for testing, I have this connected. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's been pretty exhausting. Three days. I had planned to to do this. Um, today is Thursday, and Tuesday and Wednesday, and get it done. But uh, I ended up getting called in for some inspections yesterday. I'll be booked tomorrow, so I still need to run the door speakers. Which I gotta do the door molding and run the wire. I haven't even taken a look, but I think this is a boot. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to. See if I could somehow. Uh, maybe not. It's not gonna be that easy, but see if I could get it done. Um, just so I could go active. But you know, it looks easy, but it, I could already see there's the boot's gonna be in there. I'm gonna find the light here. Anyways, um, yeah, let's see. That was the only thing remaining, just that. So I'll probably drill all through the boot. Try to get something going. Doesn't look too bad, but we'll see. All right. be uh, refoamed around the perimeter. Might sound decent once you do it. Uh, it's gonna unbolt the whole bracket right now. One, two, and three. Fortunately, there's no, there's no backing in there anymore. Okay. All right, guys. I already kind of started, but technically took off the door panel. Sell off first gen Sequoia. I'm trying to run the the wires through the boot here. I'm gonna give you a few pointers. Get one of these plastic pry tool. Makes it a lot easier to pop the grommets out from both sides. And the other thing that I'm gonna recommend is disconnect these two clips obviously unplug the battery I already have mine unplugged and disconnect these two connectors this one and this one and then try to pull them out through here straighten out the grommet and then try to run your wire that'll make it a lot easier than trying to slide it in in place just trust me I already did it yesterday it took me a lot longer to figure this out than it took me to run the wire so just a few pointers um, also helps to unclip so the wire harness is clipped on here as you can see all right so it's clipped all along there just pop them out and that'll also give you some flexibility with the wire and the next tip is pull out them from both sides so you see how i pulled it out from this side and also as you're pulling out from this side you pull this one down try to get those connectors out they're already there and then just keep pulling them out uh, I might need to use two hands but yeah that's the gist of it and then I'll come back once I get them out so just use your hands the clips are already right here just need to wiggle one out at a time and there you go so now you got them out from this side now you can straighten out the boot and make it a lot easier to channel your wires through here than having to try to run it through there, sliding them in. 
All right, hope that helps somebody. One last thing is um, bunching up your wire and trying to get it to fit all together. You could help guide it through this and just squeeze it together to try to get it as much as possible. And then once you get it through, just pull it out. And then I'm gonna sort it in through here and then put the harness back in. So that's it. And here you can see the mock-up of the 6x9 and the 2.5 speaker. I was trying to get it to fit. That 6x9 really doesn't work there. So I had to mock it up many times, cut, trim, and mold the panel to it finally fit, which you can see on the second picture, the final product. All right, guys. So, an update. You can kind of see in there. Everything's in already. The tweeters, the new speakers. I had a hard time with the speakers. This truck really doesn't fit six by nine, so I had to do some panel trimming. It's hard to tell, but if you look low enough, you can see I had to trim some of the bottom and leave, leave the spike out so it wouldn't rub on the speaker. But anyways, um only right now but let me give you guys a quick preview I already have YouTube music going um, I don't want to get copyright which I probably will anyways but I'll just try to play little spurts of songs here and there so you guys could hear it and for those who say you can't get loud with one of these Android radios it's not true it's not the most efficient way you have to buy other components but uh, I got all my ma the matrix and everything to boost my, my voltage up, the DSP to clean the sound out, and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It's freaking loud. My ears still hurt. It's probably going to be ringing for two days, but, uh, I mean, this was the point, right? <laughs> so, let's see what's next. Right, turn it down. All right, so I don't get copyright. Like I said, I'll try to spray, play little spurts. Um, my bass is off right now. Let me turn it up. You guys are gonna see a lot of things shake right now. Let me get that right. All right. As you can see, the water, the water is <laughs> one last. Let me wait a little bit longer until the beat drops. <laughs> a little bit longer. But yeah, I mean, pretty happy with it so far. I still gotta tidy a lot of things up, but this has been my daily driver, like I said, so I just gotta get it going, you know, every day, so. <laughs> I didn't even notice it on the last, I actually paused the video with the bass vibration. But uh, yeah, um, you can see it rocks pretty hard. So I'll do a little bit of this one and. Yeah, all I need is one scale, a couple bells, came in this shit by myself. Dolph, why you fuck this girl? Oh uh, shit, cause I'm a player. Quarterback, no NFL. So technically all I have right now is 115. I'm gonna have two 15s. And this is a basic 15. It's like a hundred dollar 15. So it's pretty in work. But yeah. I'm gonna clean that up. But yeah, that's, that's all I got, that 15. I'm going ham right now, but just doing the work. Like I said, I got some tidying up to do just 
wanted to get this out now we're finally done uh joining that review unit i am using coaxial out so i'm not using oh my ear kind of hurts right there you know punishment but whatever um yeah so i did use coaxial out um i did not use the line level inputs but uh outputs i mean um, I wanted to do some testing on the voltage, but I mean, if you have the option, like I said, either way, you can't get loud. You just need the extra components, and if you're going to need those extra components, just get a DSP because DSP is going to help you clean out everything, and then the matrix to boost your uh, voltage out of your DSP and kind of level match to like around 4 to 5 volts, and that'll get you some decent sound. Um, but it's doable. So I'm going to say it's doable. Um, it is more expensive but i mean you get one of these radios you know they're they're pretty functional uh, i'm probably gonna upgrade and try one of the new ones but for now that's it that's gonna wrap up the sound system setup um in the comments leave more information questions um if you have any questions i'll, I'll try to answer them or go in more review on the installation if i have to um, or do you guys have any questions? But yeah, I mean, just want to let you guys know that that's done. It's in. And it sounds pretty good. So... Yep, yeah, that's, that's pretty loud. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say. Um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm going to leave this video off. I, I know I kind of skipped around here and there, but... Um, it's been very involved like i said i had a lot of trimming from the panels let me go get the hood really quick I do have the car on so i had to trim the bottom heat it stretch it out that's what's all dirty and then put the grill back on 256 by nines and also i had to swap all the terminals because they didn't work out how i wanted them to so I got a fuse, but uh, the fuse should be here tomorrow, and then I'll get everything.